Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta on River Landwasser at the foot of the peak of Jakobshorn, my favorite uh, skiing spot for people coming to Davos. And my guest this week is a historian who's actually also a rock star academic. But I don't know about rock star. I mean, it seems to me that rock stars lead a very unhealthy life. Whereas, of course... I said rock star academic. You well, can do fine. Even rock star academics, I think, should be avoided. In fact, be I think avoided. it's a contradiction in terms. Let's face it, academics are rather boring people who write books and read books. Except when they're, if, if the academic is Neil Ferguson at Harvard, who writes about history and future and provokes us and challenges us all, all, all the time. Well, I do, I do try to provoke, and when I'm invited to come to Davos to speak, it's a chance to remind all these politicians and business people that history has an important role to play uh, in their lives as well as in mine. Well, that's very interesting, uh, Neil. On which note, I should also formally welcome you to Walk the Talk. I so force you to take, you take your hand out in <laughs> mi minus eight degrees cold. And this is a fascinating thing. Uh, how does a historian think is qualified to talk about the future? Well, of course, uh, Sherka, there's no such thing as the future. And right. you must bear in mind uh, that that is the case. There are futures, plural, uh, well, but we don't know which in, one will happen. That's in financial market. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean this point is philosophically. There's only one past. It happened. Right. But what lies ahead of us uh, really can't be predicted. There are multiple futures. Right. And we really can't know which one will happen. And part of the role that the historian has is to say to people, look, on the basis of what has happened in the past, here are some possible futures that lie ahead of us. But I'm not a prophet, and I don't predict the future. You know, you, you remind, remind me of... A famous sentence that I think Richard Armitage spoke after 9-11. He told the Pakistani ISI chief when he tried to explain to him the background to the troubles in that region, he said, the, he said history begins today. Well, I think that's a very good way of thinking about it. Uh, George Soros once said to me, I only remember the future. Uh, <laughs> when I was trying to get him to tell me something about the events of 1992, when the European exchange rate mechanism fell apart with a little help from him, Many people here are entirely focused on the future right. and they waste an awful lot of time making forecasts and predictions that are almost always wrong. Uh, the point for me is to see from the past, which is really all we have to go on, what kind of things could happen. To explore different scenarios seems to me one thing that historians can do well. Right. Uh, but we don't really have one future that we can predict. As Tom Friedman says, that the state of a society can be understood or judged by one simple fact, whether the weight of its memories is stronger or weaker or, or lighter than the weight of its dreams. Do you buy that? Because the history and future again come in. Well, I, I think there are some parts of the world which have too much history. The um, Middle East, for example? The Middle East has too much history. So do the Balkans. I remember going to uh, uh, Sarajevo uh, shortly after the Civil War uh, ended in Bosnia and uh, and somebody said to me we don't want any more history here we've we've got enough please just don't give us any more there are other parts of the, of the world in which the past plays a very small role I'm always struck by how selectively Americans remember their own past they remember the founding fathers there are endless books about them right. they remember Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War uh, but they omit the First World War You'll hardly find any American who knows that the United States participated right. uh, in the First World War. And they hardly ever talk about the Korean War. They're fixated on Vietnam. Uh, and so in the United States, there's a case of selective memory.